Now, this is the figures uh, that's coming in, that PM 2.5, the air quality where India shows possibly the highest with 83.2. So, the question does remain, what Trump said, is it really wrong? Is he really speaking about the real picture of what we see here in India? Now, let's take you through the guests joining us to give us a small glimpse into what the reality is and if at all, this kind of statement coming in from Trump, what does it really speak of India and the United States relations? Now, we have Sriram Sundar Chaulia, who's a world affairs analyst joining us. We have Vimlendu Ja, who's an environmentalist joining us. We have Sarah Shah Halim, who's also an activist. Now, let me take it, take it first with uh, Sriram Sundar. Uh, Mr. Sriram, here we're looking at the kind of relation between Prime Minister Modi as well as Trump. They've always had the kind of affection, at least that's what they've, they've displayed it time and again, which uh, really gives us that kind of confidence that the United States is always going to be uh, in support of India, at least with Trump at the helm of affairs. But here on a public fo a forum, a debate when all eyes are on Trump, he calls India's air as filthy. He could be right on a certain level, but at the end of it, it's quite hurtful to, to, to say the least, considering the kind of affection he has towards Modi, calls him a friend time and again. Yeah, Nabila, you know, we have gotten used to these bobs from Trump. I mean, the thing is, you have already listed many other things he said about us on trade and uh, uh, even earlier on our environmental uh, problems. I think uh, what Trump has ignored, you know, as a populist and a transactionalist and a narrow uh, America first agenda is, you know, the responsibility that the U.S. has towards um, climate change, you know, as a whole. And we have been calling their bluff many times uh, by raising the issue of climate justice. Because if you look at the per capita carbon emissions, you're right that the, you know, the air quality in the U.S. Uh, is right now superior to much, much better than uh, what it is in developing countries. But the reality is, you know, both the stock of the carbon that they have emitted historically over the last 200 years of industrialization, and even the, the, uh, in proportion to the population, is 16 metric tons. That's what the U.S. emits every year in terms of carbon. India's uh, carbon emission is actually less than two metric tons. So it's just not comparable. But for Trump, he is not into all these, you know, policy nitty gritty. He just is trying to make a political point, get across, uh, you know, his rivals and try to run them down with some kind of uh, arguments that that sound uh, plausible for his uh, base, which is uh, believes the that friendship that he displays with, uh, with India. So that's what's, the mindset he's bringing the, to the table. What's with the affection he shows to Prime Minister Modi? Is that only for both? We and the rhetoric that he issues from time to time. We've gotten used to this. In fact, Mr. Sriram, here we're looking at the situation in India also not very well. Uh, we're looking at the air quality across the nation, not just in Delhi, in Chennai, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, uh, several other places across of India where the air quality is severe. Uh, we're looking at days where it spikes. And this is a time, a COVID-19 period, where if situation aggravates, we're looking at the number of deaths also increasing. Uh, what should, how do we intros, introspect as a nation here, uh, considering what Trump has said? He could have been opportunist, but shouldn't we be looking well, inward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, you know, we have governance problems. And there's also the issue of, you know, state society cooperation uh, and uh, environmental movement needs to get stronger. There are lots of issues, the farmers uh, in Punjab and Haryana. But I just want to, you know, take back to, to the question of Trump. You see, it's not about Modi, Trump, Bonhomie failing. You know, that's the, actually a red herring because Trump has not pleased anybody. No ally or partner has been left unscathed in the last four years. He's a very unique kind of anti-establishment politician who's been following a kind of a, a you know, populist uh, approach to the world. So nobody has actually been left uh, without being insulted or offended by Trump. So I think we should take aside the uh, assessment that this is a failure of Modi's foreign policy. I don't think so. He tried his best because we needed this strategic partnership for other reasons. And we said, OK, if this is the cost of having a strategic partnership to counterbalance China and for other reasons, for counterterrorism and such things, we will accept 
some of these you know outrageous things he says are not in the sense except as in you know silently uh, absorb it but you know take it as a operating cost of this relationship but i think the relationship has gone forward whether trump uh, you know uh, says these off the cuff remarks or not the point is the relationship is moving forward and even if trump uh, gets a second term and if even if we have to work him a second time we have to think about all these consequences before you know being uh, you know saying that we must issue a strong protest you know most of the time people but don't, don't think, care don't much for trump uh, you know we, uh, like these don't so you i don't think, think we should india be making is the now time for us to toughen up against uh, trump insults go don't you think as much as we've got to look inward don't you think it's time to toughen up against trump how could he possibly uh, embarrass india time and again on international platforms and we are still so soft on him for what no i think you know we should not be engaging in a tit for tat with populists who have got a you know a loose tongue i think prime minister modi has a dignity and a stature and you know we don't respond like this when he is stooping low we should be staying high and talking about the broader relationship you know that is diplomacy it's not about you know showing outrage over everything and giving it back to him word for word you know we don't right, have to do that. that we have already criticized the us record on climate change mr ashram says that we've got to look inward quite Which clearly we have to where do you think country? the modi so government over the last uh, years uh, of governance you know, has gone wrong in ensure sir shriram here is uh, you're saying that we shouldn't be uh, there shouldn't be tit for tat this is a time that we've got to look into our own uh, misery and try and fix it but there is joe biden taking a chance upon what trump said and showing a picture of uh, uh, trump hugging prime minister modi saying this is a hug with the prime minister from filthy india he calls india filthy india's air filthy this is embarrassing isn't it and you're saying i think don't biden question. is playing uh, yeah nabila in this case you know biden is playing for the indian american votes there you know and, and that's all uh, right. in some of the swing in some of the swing states uh, there's a possibility that uh, more indian americans will vote for trump than they have done ever for any republican candidate so i think uh, biden is simply trying to you know scare indian americans saying look at this man you know he's insulting your country of origin you know i think it's a part of the campaigning and uh, i don't think biden uh, he, of course biden is more like a traditional politician he doesn't uh, fling you know allegations and baseless stuff uh, at anybody like this so well, this, this uh, in that sense he's more that old school but i don't think he's, he's different in india either he's simply using that Trump India is embarrassing India, gains. calling us the tariff king, calling India's uh, air is filthy. Not once, time and again, speaking about air quality, water quality, and this is a time when uh, you have uh, Mike Pompeo trying to come to India. He's come very recently to try and establish ties between the United States and India. If you have that kind of concern about India's air quality and India's filth, don't come. well uh, nabila only thing i'll say is you know pompeo or the 2 plus 2 and all those are very substantive issues which have long uh, you know strategic uh, import but uh, trump's uh, you know rhetorical swipes uh, probably don't matter i mean he would have already gotten over it in you know in an hour's time and unless uh, biden provoked him with this uh, a retort video so i think uh, you know this is a, a lot of uh, rhetoric and uh, one should not really fall for it in my view because we have a china problem remember that it's not only air pollution which is a domestic and a global issue but we have a national security challenge for which we need the united states so i don't think we should be you know getting uh, uh, hot under so, the collar so are you saying things, that we are we should point out because we are desperate we are doing for logically support, that the us is at fault okay and that, uh, that they better okay with whatever mind, trump says uh, what they are doing yes so you're saying that because we have china to deal with we are desperate for uh, united states support and therefore we should be okay with whatever trump says to us and repeatedly well you know for in foreign policy we have to make some tough choices and uh, difficult calls uh, right now we have uh, an issue with the chinese and in our uh, indian in the indo pacific there's a balance of power issue so for that you know the us relationship has to go ahead even though right. you so occasionally look at the face these kind of slurs but saying. we are pointing out in a more systematic way look at the bigger the picture is that what you're saying biblical quick word uh, to from you on the green, that uh, apart from uh, the for uh, green transition the to developing countries from the united states and us. america apart from that uh, where we are so constantly taking a big beating you know, thanks to trump uh, lena thank you very much thank you uh, mr shriram thank you sara for joining for, us uh, for what i gather you say admit it digest it work on it that's what we've got to do ignore what trump said work on your own misery here thank you very much for joining us